Tobacco addiction experts are predicting thousands of lives could be saved each year if smokers switch to e-cigarettes. Writing in a medical journal today, they say although we don't have all the answers about the long-term impact on people's health, e-cigarettes are much safer than conventional old-style cigarettes. However, there is a difference in opinion. Only last week, the World Health Organization said there should be a ban on the use of e-cigarettes indoors and sales to children should stop. Their statement was pretty clear. This is what Armando Perugia from the WHO said last week. E-cigarette is promoted in a way that initiates the use among non-smokers, including ex-smokers and young people. In the past, tobacco industry has been not willing to move smokers to these new products, but rather try to hook non-nicotine dependent people to these new products in order to expand their market. That's something that we need to prevent. So the World Health Organization saying one thing and research out today another. What should old style smokers do? Ignore the warnings? Go to e-cigs or say, well, since they are starting to look quite iffy, I am going to carry on smoking tobacco. Let us speak. Try and get to the truth here with Clive Bates, public health commentator and blogger who says actually warnings about e-cigs are a bit alarmist. And Professor John Ashton is with us, president of the Faculty of Public Health, and his organization has welcomed what that gentleman was saying just then. So, Professor Ashton, you think we should be careful here? Careful, yes. Um, I think the question you ask is, what should old-style smokers do? Um, Old-style smokers should take advantage of the smoking cessation services which are available through GPs and which have contributed to the quite um, dramatic reductions in smoking over the last few years. It seems as though uh, e-cigarettes may be helpful to some people, and um, I wouldn't stop them using them if, uh, if they wish to. Certainly adults, you know, consenting adults in private, um, it's up to them what they do. But um, there are some other issues about them uh, to do with the um, contents. There are about 400 companies that are producing these things at the moment. Some of them, you know, are almost literally a man in a shed. Others are much more professional production companies. But we saw last weekend about a contaminant in um, a product in the northeast, which was was, um, you know, uh, f- confectionery-based popcorn flavour, uh, where the flavouring can actually in itself cause lung disease. So that there are issues there. But um, we're particularly concerned about the way they're being marketed uh, that makes them attractive to young people. Okay, the, let me do, sorry, the, to, just the to tobacco stop. companies yeah. have now been buying up the e-cigarette companies and they're promoting them at things like young people music festivals right. um, in the United States can I just, can I just break the same in? kind of techniques as used to be yeah. used with tobacco 20, 25 okay. years ago. We do so have, sorry, can, hang on, hang on, we've got another guest here, so don't, yeah. don't want you to go through the whole thing in one go. Clyde Bates, there's about seven different things there. Um, <laughs> where do we start? Smoking to e-cigarettes you think is fine, yeah, Clive? To- to- totally fine, and I, I think it's a move that uh, many people, and we now have two, 2.1 million people using e-cigarettes, 700,000 are now ex-smokers. That's a huge public health dividend. You know, when you switch from smoking to an e-cigarette, your risk goes down 95, maybe 99%. So if you're concerned, as anyone in the Faculty of Public Health should be, about cancer, about heart disease, about emphysema, about stroke, about better quality of life, that is a very good move to take. And the, and reason, the reason for that, Clive, just to be clear, is that with an e-cigarette you are taking in nicotine, not tobacco, and tobacco is the thing that kills you. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, basically it's the smoke, the burning particles of organic material, tobacco, the hot toxic gases in smoke that do the damage. The nicotine itself, it's not totally benign, but it's not the thing that causes all the disease. So if you find a way to substitute the nicotine in, um, without all the smoke, you get a huge health dividend. At the same time, people feel it's, find it easier to take these products up than just to quit completely. So you have the promise here of driving down smoking without having to deal with the nicotine as well. Right, and that, what, that's what why is, it's going to be successful. Professor, what is the argument against that? They are safer than smoking. End of. Well, they may be safer with some respects. I mean, Mr. Bates hasn't mentioned the role that nicotine may play in causing blindness uh, with macular degeneration. Is that right? 
Yes, nicotine is a factor, seems to be a factor in, in macular degeneration. Well, I mean, smokers are going blind, are they? It's not about killing people, but it's about other really serious impacts on their that. health. That sounds terrible, Clive. Look, th- this is exactly why the uh, eight European experts have come out fighting this morning. There's an orchestrated campaign from Professor Ashton and many people like him to completely exaggerate the risks of these things, completely downplay the benefits. You know, well, talk what about... What have you got to say about well, nicotine and eye health, Mr Bates? Well, I just don't think it's a big issue, to be honest. Well, you it's, should it's, talk it's, to the RNIB well, look, about that. Look, I'm sorry, if, if, we're getting into that ki- if we're getting into that kind of issue, we are missing the big picture here. No one is saying that... No, no, I'm sorry, but no one is issue. saying... A big well, issue. Uh, well, well, how many st- smokers have gone blind? Really, yeah, John Ashton, you've, you've got to give us some, some figures on that. I'm just thinking, if smokers go blind, they, we could think it's the smoke and it's the tobacco. So you need to find a control well, sample I, of... I think what, t- what this illustrates is that this is it, a more complicated issue than the, the, the proponents d- of... Uh, but what are the figures on take. nicotine? If Sorry. you ask me, do I want to stop... No, I'm not um, asking. E- people that. using e-cigarettes. I'm not asking that. Not asking. You know, I'm asking if you, you ask f- me if I want to stop people using e-cigarettes, then I've told you, I d- you know, consenting adults, up to them. If, the, if they want to market them at children and young oh, people... Not asking about that. ...and renormalise smoking behaviour, which we've been dealing with very effectively in recent years, I'm sorry, I draw the line there. Professor, I what, sorry, Professor... Bec- taking my young son into a restaurant or a bar and having people using these products around them just before and modelling that behaviour again, which we ha- have begun to lose. Right. Professor, before we move off, because there are people who use nicotine in various forms and you've thrown in blindness, so please give us your statistical basis for that. Well, you can talk to the RNIB no, about no, the I'm asking you. I'm asking about you. prevention of blindness and the fact that nicotine is a factor in, in macular degeneration. Right. Clyde Bates, these things are untested, aren't they? Well, completely the, untested. No, no, that's not true. There's been a lot of work has been done on the, uh, you know, the toxicology of the vapours. There's an extensive published literature, which presumably Professor Ashton isn't that well acquainted with. Well, hang on, he, which, he mentioned one which was popcorn flavoured, and when you burn the popcorn flavour, you end up with a carcinogen. The, no, there is... There, no, well, these things aren't burnt, remember. They're heated. Well, lit so, up by a no, charger. No, and, no, and no there's, there's defi- your house doesn't there, catch there's, fire. There's definitely a risk associated with that particular substance. And, and ah. in popcorn factories, people have developed lung disease. So a sensible regulatory approach would not be to allow that. And I, I, I would why support isn't it reg- that. Why are you backing well, something that's unregulated? Well, it's not regulated by medicines regulation. It's not regulated by food regulation. We, we are trying to get sensible regulation agreed. But no, unfortunately, you, you want to unfortunately, unfortunately, what people like Professor Ashton okay, want to do is you, classify can you these things as... your position on regulation? Yes, because it's sh- very unclear. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. But there should, there, there should be regulation of these products uh, as consumer products. Anything harmful in them that's deliberately put there should be taken out. And frankly, we can, make, we can just get on with it then. Even even right. now, it's, even it's as the products are, industry, they are, they are 95 to 99 percent manufacturers. Some of them just look, a man and a dog operation. A man and look, a dog. And, and this and is you're quite content for the public to be subjected to. No, this. Th- this is all part of this big smear campaign, which the eight academics are warning against, which is trying to deter people from using these products when they would well, give no, them no, enormous listen, health benefits clearly, relative you, to smoking. Okay, professor, adults we, wish to use e-cigarettes. That's up to them. But okay. I don't want them marketed at children. Just, just one thing, you're one thing for Clare. The project. You're putting people off, okay. and that's going to cause them to smoke Can more. Can I be cause more for help? them to be marketed at young people? Are they not marketed at young people? Hardly any, as you well know, What's hardly... What's in the States with hardly, sponsoring festivals uh, hardly, aimed at young people and this kind of thing? Hardly any young people use these things. The, the, they are very popular now with adults who are concerned about their smoking, want to do something about their health, they're switching. What? And the problem Can is ask, you are putting them off. Just, hang on, let me just ask you, sorry... Buying up e-cigarette companies and marketing them with uh, fruit flavours, bubblegum flavour, popcorn, pepco- popcorn flavour. Why do you think they're doing that? Because adults like those flavours as well. Oh, come those, on. How those many flav- adults do you know well, that you, eat popcorn you're, you're, except when you're, they have a few with their children at the pictures? You're just sounding like a bloke in a bar. You're supposed to be a research professor no, no, here. I'm asking if you. I'm, asking I'm, a I'm telling question. you. I, All right. I'm telling yeah, you, can I ask just one more question? Are the, these products, with, these with products are used by... All right, hang on, don't, don't, just a second. Sorry, Professor, hang on. Clive, one more question for you. Um, OK, we've talked about from going from smoking to e-cigs, 
maybe that's definitively a good thing because you stop smoking and smoking is bad. What about going from nothing to e cigs? I, I don't smoke, right? And I'm seeing you walking down the street and I'm told there's nothing wrong with it and it's popcorn flavoured. I quite like popcorn. So why don't I... Do you have a problem with that, me starting? Well, starting from uh, nothing? I, don't, I certainly wouldn't advise it and I hope you wouldn't. Why but, not, but, though? Well, if... The point is, if you did, we wouldn't need to worry too much about it because it isn't very harmful in absolute terms. You think I won't go blind? I think it's quite likely, you're un- uh, very unlikely, that you'll go blind from using these things. Research, I don't know where that's come from. Research in the New Eng- well, it came from the professor. Research in the New England Journal of Medicine last week said it's a gateway to cocaine. Oh, well, I mean, this, th- that study is one of the most ridiculous things. I mean, they detected some changes in a mouse brain who'd been administered nicotine first and then cocaine afterwards. And from that, they interpreted an enormous leap of, uh, you know, uh, faith into saying there was some sort of gateway effect. If there was, we'd see an awful lot more cocaine addicts around than there are. Thank you very much, Clive Bates, who doesn't want these uh, alarmist, as he says, warnings about e cigs and Professor John Ashton, who is worried about them. There we are. I wonder if you are a... They call them vapours. Vapours.